Okay, there's this movie called Back to the Future. It's 1985 and Marty McFly is a radical teenager. No McFly ever amounted to anything in the history of Hill Valley. Well, history's gonna change. Marty's dad, George McFly, is a total dork and his boss, Biff, is a real jerk. Hello? Marty goes to the Twin Pines Mall parking lot where Doc Brown is waiting for him. When this baby hits 88 miles an hour, you're gonna see some serious crap. You built a time machine out of a DeLorean? Here comes some Libyan nationalists and they shoot Doc. <laughs> Doc Brown is dead. Marty jumps in the DeLorean. He goes back to November 5th. 1955. He goes into a diner and he runs into his dad. Hey, McFly! And Biff. George leaves, but Marty follows him and finds him in a tree. He's a peeping Tom. George almost gets hit by a car, but Marty pushes him out of the way and he gets hit by a car. It's written all over your underwear. Marty's mom thinks that he's hot stuff and that gives Marty the heebie jeebies. Marty gets the heck out of there and goes to Doc Brown's house. I need your help to get back to the year 1985. Doc doesn't believe him. Flux capacitor! Doc believes him. 1.21 gigawatts! There's nothing that can power the time machine except for a bolt of lightning. Next Saturday night, we're sending you back to the future. Let me see that picture of your family again. His brother's head is missing. It's like it's been erased. We gotta get your parents to interact. Marty pretends he's an alien to convince George to ask Lorraine to the dance. I'm your density. Ew. Uh-oh, here comes Biff, but Marty punches him in the face. Psh, Biff starts chasing Marty, but he gets away by using cool skateboard moves. Uh-oh, Lorraine asks Marty to go to the dance. Meanwhile, Doc is setting up a contraption to get the lightning bolt to power the flux capacitor. Marty tries to tell Doc that he's gonna get shot by the Libyans in 1985, but Doc refuses to listen. Marty writes him a letter. Dance time. Marty and Lorraine are sitting in the car. It's like I'm kissing my brother. Then Biff shows up and his goons take Marty and lock him in a trunk. George shows up and he thinks it's gonna be Marty in the car, but it's Biff. Get your damn hands off her. Her. George, help! Marvin Berry gets Marty out of the trunk. Biff hurts Lorraine, and this makes George mad. Kapow! Marty looks at his picture and his sister starts disappearing. Unless you know someone else who can play the guitar. Marty fills in on guitar, but he starts disappearing. Excuse me. George and Lorraine kiss. Marty looks at the picture and his whole family comes back. Uh-oh, time to get to the clock tower. The risk could be disastrous. Then the cable connected to the clock tower comes undone. And the DeLorean won't start. Doc climbs the tower and dangles as he tries to plug it back in. Marty gets the DeLorean started. He sets the time machine back 10 extra minutes so he can warn Doc about the Libyans. Doc plugs the cable back in. Marty hits the right spot just as the lightning strikes and boom. Marty's back in 1985, but he needs to stop Doc from getting killed. But he's too late. Doc is dead. Bulletproof vest? Doc pulls out the note. It's all taped together. Doc brings Marty home and says he's going 30 years into the future. Marty wakes up the next day to find out his family is not a bunch of losers. And Biff is a total dinkus. Oh, hey, Marty. Just then, Doc Brown shows up. He's back from the future. It's your kids, Marty. Something's gotta be done about your kids. Where we're going. We don't need roads. They fly into the future and live happily ever after. Until Back to the Future 2.